This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The Houston Astros faced the Philadelphia Phillies at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia for a Wednesday night game on May 10, 1978. Houston was managed by Bill Verdon and were looking to break into the upper level of the NL West after finishing in third or fourth place in seven of the past eight seasons. They started off 1978 slow, however, entering this game with an 11-15 record. Philadelphia was managed by Danny Ozark and were an exceptional team, having won back-to-back NL East crowns with 101 wins in both 1976 and 77, but losing the NLCS in both seasons. They entered this game still atop the NL East with a 14-9 record. This audio recording is from the Philadelphia Radio Broadcast featuring announcers Andy Musser and Chris Wheeler. Anthem, and we're about ready to play baseball, and here are the lineups for tonight's game. Here's Chris to give them to you. Okay, Andy, thank you very much for the visiting Houston Astros. They'll go with Terry Poole in left field. Enos Cabell will hit number two and play third base. Cesar Cedeno in center field. Jose Cruz will play right field and hit fourth. Bob Watson at first base, batting fifth. Art Howell will be the second baseman. He'll hit number six. Joe Ferguson, the catcher, batting seventh. Roger Metzger at shortstop. He'll hit number eight. The pitcher, right-hander, Mark Lemangelo. For the Philadelphia Phillies, Bake McBride will lead off and play right field. Larry Boa at shortstop. Mike Schmidt at third base, hitting number three. Greg Luzinski in left field, batting fourth. Jay Johnstone will get a start and play first base tonight. He'll hit number five. Gary Maddox in center field, batting sixth. Bob Boone will catch and hit number seven. Jim Morrison, the second baseman, will bat eighth. The pitcher for the Phillies is right-hander Jim Lonborg. Remember that during tonight's Phillies game, each Philly that homers receives a free case of Tasty Cake and one for the Lafayette School. And the same goes for the Phillies' winning pitcher. Bruce Freming is behind the plate tonight. Eric Gregg at first, Billy Williams at second, and Dick Stello at third. Now you can win even more money in the Daily News home run payoff because this season every hit pays off. Tonight's payoff inning will be the seventh. Right-hander Jim Lonborg completing his warm-ups out front as Spoon tosses the ball down to second baseman Jim Morrison. Bonnie has won three games and has lost only twice. He bids to become the first Phillies pitcher to win four games this year. Lonborg with three victories. Steve Carlton has three, and so does Randy Lurch. Lurch has a 3-1 record. Here's the left-handed batting Terry Poole to lead it off for Houston. The Astros winning last night's ball game 5-1 behind the four-hit pitching of J.R. Richard. Lonborg into his windup, and the first pitch to Poole is a strike right over the plate. Bob Lillis coaching at third base for the Astros and Tony Pacheco at first. Poole is batting at 270. Last night he had one of the key hits in the ball game as he drove in two runs in the seventh inning as the Astros salted it away. A slider is low and inside, one ball and one strike. Poole has one home run and has knocked in six. Swing and a miss. One and two the count to Terry Poole. Enos Cabell is on deck. The Astros have lost six of their last games. They are in fourth place in the National League West. A breaking ball is outside. And the count to Terry Poole is two balls and two strikes. Lonborg getting his sixth start of the year tonight. Here's the 2-2 pitch, and it's tapped into right center field for a base hit, and it's getting between the outfielders. It'll go in for extra bases for Poole. He's taking a big turn at second and heading for third. Here's Boa's relay. He is safe. A triple for Terry Poole on a ball that really wasn't stung that hard, but it went to the proper place between Maddox and McBride, and Poole has a triple. The one thing about Terry Poole is uh, 
He runs very well. Uh, people really don't know much about him. The Astros are kind of one of those no-name teams, and you don't know a lot about some of their players. But it's a contact hitter, and he's got good speed. And he smelled that triple about halfway to second base because the ball came off the wall kind of funny to Gary Maddox. And he never slowed up, and he made it easily. That is his first triple of the year. Here is right-handed batting Enos Cabell. And the Phillies are keeping the infield back. The pitch to Cabell is swung on a miss, throw to third base. Back in time is cool. It was a close play. Good snap throw by Boone. Cabell, who was 0 for 4 last night, is hitting at 255. Cabell, right handed batter. Lonborg winds. Here's the one strike pitch. Ball top toward third base. It's going foul. Nothing in two. The count on Cabell with Cesar Cedeno on deck. Cabell only faced Lonborg two times last year. He went 0 for 2. Lonnie had no record against the Astros last year in one appearance. Here's a swing and a miss on a slider. Cabell strikes out. Lonborg picking up the first out of the inning on a strikeout. And it brings up Cedeno. Well, he was the big shot last night with a first inning home run. And a triple in the seventh. Cesar on a two for four night scored two of the Astros' five runs. So Daniel batting at 286 as he digs in right-handed batter. Runner at third, one down. Lundborg winds. Here's the pitch to Cesar, and it chases him back from the plate as it comes inside. Ball one. Sedano was one for two off Lonnie last year. That one hit a home run. Wind up in the pitch to Cedeno. Catches the inside corner of strike call. Cesar signed a 10-year contract before the season began. Estimated to be worth three and a half million dollars. That is, to our knowledge, the longest term contract given out in baseball currently. One ball, one strike to Cedeno. Pool a third with one out. Lonborg from the full windup. The pitch is low. Two balls and one strike. Fly ball scores the run here. And Cedeno good at getting the ball to the outfield. Cesar also among the National League leaders in stolen bases. He has 10. That ranks him fourth. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Just a little bit low. Three balls and a strike. Hunborg's pitching him. Uh, he's trying to make Cedeno go after a bad ball. He really doesn't want to pitch around him in this spot, especially with the left-handed hitting Cruz coming up. But... Cesar Cedeno is such a good hitter and such a good RBI man. He's just trying to get him to go after some kind of bad breaking ball. Lonborg ready. Here's his 3-1 pitch to Cedeno. It is inside ball four, and Cesar takes a walk. Runners at the corners as the left-handed batting Jose Cruz heads for the plate, hitting at 286. Cruz has knocked in five runs. Pool at third base. Cedeno at first with one down. This is one of those guys who's really tough to defense because he's a wild swinger, and he doesn't know where he's going to hit the ball half the time, so the Phillies don't. And you, if you notice the defense, you almost have to play him straight away and hope. Lonborg makes a check throw to first base. Cedeno is back in time. Last year, Cruz was the Astros' most valuable player. He batted 299. Another throw to first base, a little crisper this time. Cruz also tied for the lead in the National League lead with 10 sacrifice flies. He and Bobby Mercer... Each chased home 10 runs on fly balls. There goes Cedeno. The pitch is grounded to first base. Hebner will cover. Jay Johnstone comes home and in time to get the out on Poole. Jay Johnstone playing at first base had a little trouble getting that ball out of his glove, but he made the throw to the plate and Poole is out. On the play, a fielder's choice. Cruz safe at first and Cedeno to second. Terry Poole did not get a good jump off at third base because, like Andy said, Johnstone hesitated. The ball was stuck in his glove a little bit. and The play was close, but not that close. Uh, he was definitely out, and I think you'd say that Poole uh, just hesitated a little bit at third base, and that was what got him thrown out at home plate. It was a good play by Johnstone, a good tag by Booney. That's the second out of the inning, and it brings up Bob Watson with runners at first and second. There goes Cedeno to third. The pitch is inside. Boone makes a bad throw to third. It bounces. And uh, Schmidt came up with it, but no chance to nail Cedeno, who gets his 11th stolen base. 
Well, Bob Watson uh, really pulls the ball, and the, the, the third baseman has to play very, very deep. And Cedeno loves to run the bases, and he's caught Schmidt way back, and there's not much Mike can do about it. And Booney saw how far back he was, so he wanted to make sure he didn't throw that ball in the outfield and miss Schmidt because he had already started to throw it. One and nothing the count to Watson. Best ball is inside, two and nothing. Watson batting at 293. Watson, a career 300 hitter. In fact, his career average is right on that mark, 300. The 10th highest average among current National League players. Here's a breaking ball, tap foul outside of third. Two balls and a strike to Bob Watson. He leads the Astros in RBIs. He has 19. A lot like Lazinski, and he's a big guy who hits for an average. He doesn't get many leg hits and hits his ground balls very hard. Lonborg stretches. Here's the 2 1 pitch to Watson. It's popped up off the handle of the bat. Easy play in the infield left side. Mike Schmidt takes the ball in fair ground for the out, and the Phillies are out of a jam in the first inning. No runs, one hit, and two men left on base at the end of the half inning. The Astros nothing, the Phillies coming. The day is done. Two-year-old Mark Lemangelo out of Jersey City in his second big league season will pitch the game for Houston tonight. Lemangelo has won two and has lost three. Both of his victories were complete games. He three-hit the Cincinnati Reds, beating them 6-1. to one, And he had a six-hitter against San Diego, winning that game 4-3. to three. Lemangelo lost his last start, but he did not pitch badly. Lemangelo with a 3.65 earned run average. Last year, in two appearances against the Phillies, he lost them both pitching to an earned run average of 7.20. Bake McBride will start it for the Phillies. Bake with a seven-game hit streak going. The Pirates won their game this afternoon over San Francisco by a 5-1 score. Bert Blylove in the winner. He's 2-3. And, and Jim Barr, the loser, he is 2-4. and four. Billy DeMars coaches at third base. Tony Taylor at first base for the Phillies. Lemangelo, right-hander, winds, and here's the pitch to Bake. It is outside ball one. Phillies with a half-game lead in the National League East. Ahead of the Montreal Expos, who miraculously pulled out that second game in Atlanta last night. Here's another pitch by Lemangelo that misses. Two and nothing the count. Montreal went into the last inning of that game last night in the second end of that doubleheader, trailing by two runs. Breaking ball catches the outside corner two and one. There were two outs in the inning and two strikes on the batter. They got a couple of base hits and a home run by Carter and won that ball game. 2-1 pitch to McBride. Swing and a ball tapped toward first. It goes foul. 2-2 two two the count. Like a game I saw once. Had an ending like our playoff game here last year. You're right. Two runs up. Yeah. Two out. Two strikes. Anything can happen in this great game. <laughs> During Bake's seven-game batting streak, he is hit at a 452 clip. Lemangelo winds. Here's the pitch to McBride, and a slider just misses full count. Well, we hope you're hearing us loud and clear tonight. All of our network affiliates are here at the ballpark. I don't know who's running the shop back there, but... Hey, and here is the home plate umpire, Bruce Fremming, warning somebody in the Houston dugout. He is over in front of the dugout saying, on the next one, I'm going to get you. Well, he's got... The great at rabbit ears, you know, he for a home plate umpire to you know to be worrying about that in the first inning of first batter is unbelievable. You better be careful, he'll hear you. Sorry. Three balls and two strikes on McBride. Here's the pitch to Bake. It's laced to left field and a base hit. Terry Poole over trying to cut it off. It gets away from him. McBride will go to second, and that'll be a double for Bake McBride. Bake McBride doubles between left fielder Poole and the line. And Bake now has hit safely in eight straight ball games. There's still some wet spots in the outfield from the rain that we've had so much here. And that ball hit one of those wet spots and really skidded on Terry Poole. And he had to try and make a tougher play than it was going to be. And Bake was going all the way on and made it to second easily. So Bake has batted safely in eight straight. And here's a guy who is trying to extend his streak to nine tonight, Larry Boa. Larry batting at 317. Switch hitter batting left-handed. Pitch on the way to Bowie. Drops a bunt off the plate, fielded by the pitcher who will go to first. Gets it there in time for the out. And Bake uh, McBride was not expecting that play, and he is still standing on second base. Well, Boa made a, a poor bunt on that for a sacrifice, and uh, I guess Bake just figured, well, I better not go on that and get thrown out here in the first inning, and he didn't go. And 
Clemangelo probably would have had a heck of a shot to throw him out at third base, so he figures his best bet is to stay put. But Larry Boa did not want to bunt that ball right back to the pitcher. Here's Mike Schmidt batting at 319. Mike with five home runs, 17 runs batted in. McBride at second with one out. Schmidt takes a fastball low, ball one. The right-hander stretches. Here's his pitch to Mike, and it's popped up on the right side behind first base. It could be a tough play. Three fielders converging. It is taken by the right fielder, Cruz, and again, no chance for McBride to advance as Cruz rifles a strong throw to third baseman Cabell following the catch. Schmidt pops up to Cruz in shallow right field. That's the second out, and it's up to the ball. Still no score in this ball game. Here's Luzinski batting at an even 300. Greg leading the Phillies in both home runs with six and RBIs 18. Greg Luzinski with a 3.11 lifetime average against Houston pitching. Pitch to the ball is in for a strike called. Oakland and Toronto tonight scoreless at the end of an inning. Rick Langford pitching for Oakland and Jim Clancy for Toronto. Here's a high fly ball into shallow right field. Cruz signals he can get it. And he takes it for the third out of the inning. For the Phillies in the first, no runs, one hit and one left. At the end of an inning, no score. Which is why they say... When your car's not running like it did before, make a pit stop at Penn Jersey Auto Stores. Well, tomorrow, one of the season's best pitching matchups between Tom Seaver and Steve Carlton. The Phillies and the Reds here at 7.35 tomorrow. Friday, the teams will meet again at 8.05. It'll be Randy Lurch against Bill Bonham. Back after some elbow problems, he has not pitched since the 21st of April. Saturday, the Phillies and the Reds again. It'll be Fred Norman and Jim Cott at 7.35. And on Sunday, Larry Christensen and Tom Hoom. And it'll be free canvas tote bags for all women. Compliments of the Phillies and Tasty Cake. So big four-game series coming up against the Cincinnati Reds. Sales have been brisk for that four-game series, but no game is sold out, and there are no bad seats here in Veterans Stadium. So come on out this weekend. We'll look for you when the Phillies play the Cincinnati Reds. Art Howell will start it for the Astros in the second. Pitch to the right-handed batter. Low ball one. Howell hitting at 293. Howell, Ferguson, and Metzger to face Lonborg in the second. Here's one in for a strike. Howe was two for two off Lonborg last year. One of his hits a home run. Here's a breaking ball, and it's a very high fly ball to left field. Greg Luzinski has room, and the ball a few steps toward the line takes it for the out. Howe flies out to left field, first out of the second inning in this scoreless ball game. And here's a catcher with power, Joe Ferguson. Fergie hitting at 213. Ferguson standing deep in the batter's box. Lundborg winds and the pitch is swung on and missed a strike. Fergie tried to check his swing and couldn't. Slider by Lundborg is low. One ball and one strike. Switch hitting shortstop Roger Metzger is on deck. Ferguson swings and fouls off the 1-1 pitch. A ball and two strikes to catcher Joe Ferguson. A ball and two strikes on Ferguson. Here's Lonborg's delivery. A slider swing, and did he go all the way around? There's an appeal. And the Phillies are throwing the ball around, and apparently it is a strikeout. Ferguson goes down swinging. He walks away from the plate. He wasn't concerned about it. And that'll be the second strikeout for Lonborg. When I say he wasn't concerned about it, I mean he did not question the call. No, he knew he swung at that one. If he'd have hit that ball, it might have gone in the seats. The batter is Metzger, and the pitch to him is low inside ball one. Metzger is switch hitter, batting from the left side. He's hitting at 206. Lonborg winds, and the pitch is a fastball outside, two and nothing the count. Pitcher Mark Lamangello is on deck. 
No score in this ball game. Astros batting top of the second. Here's a strike on the outside corner right at the knees. Two and one the count. Here's a ball topped off the plate behind the mound. Lonnie gets it on a big hop and rifles a throw to first in time for the out. A good fielding play by Lonborg. And he has a one, two, three inning. At the end of an inning and a half, no score. Right now, M.A. Jay Johnstone leads off the Phillies' second inning. Jay still looking for his first hit this year. And in fact, tonight is only his second start of the season. Jay's only other start was Sunday, April 23rd at Montreal at first base. So here's Jay, left-handed batter. It'll be Johnstone, Maddox, and Boone to hit for the Phillies in the second inning of a scoreless ball game. Each team has one hit. Right-hander Lemon Jello winds, and the pitch to Jay is over for a strike call. Boston and Baltimore scoreless at the end of an inning. Alan Ripley pitching for the Sox against Mike Flanagan of the Birds. Here's the one-strike pitch to Johnstone, and it's a breaking ball low. He has a good sense of humor. You know, Jay told me this afternoon he can't understand why they don't get a contest going on what time, place, and date he'll get his first hit. The 1-1 pitch to the Jay Bird is outside. He says when he does get a hit, they'll probably stop the game and give him the ball. <laughs> he says, yeah, well, he can't understand why they paid so much attention to Rose. He said, you know, they could at least do the same thing for him when he gets a hit. Here's a pitch outside, and the count is 3-1 and one on Johnstone. Oakland and Toronto scoreless in the third inning. Langford against Clancy. Seattle did not score in the first against Cleveland. Outside, ball four, and Jay Johnstone takes a walk. So they won't stop the game for that as Jay goes down to first base, and here is Gary Maddox. Gary hitting at 294. And Gary has batted safely in seven of the last eight ball games, including last night when he doubled in his last at bat against a very tough J.R. Richard. Maddox, right-handed batter with the widespread stance. Lemon Jello chases Johnstone back to first with a check throw. Another throw to first, and this time Jay has to scramble back. Lemon Jello made a surprise move to first that time. Johnstone, of course, is not a base stealing threat, but the uh, Phillies will hit and run a lot of times with Maddox. Pitch to Gary is inside, ball one. Maddox has not homered this year, but he has knocked in 13 runs, and Gary's having a fine start. Lemangelo winds. Here's the pitch to Maddox. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. It was a slider. One ball and one strike. Well, after this weekend series with the Reds, the Phillies are hitting the road for two weeks in four different cities. They'll be away, so you better get out this weekend. It'll be a long time before the Phillies are back here at Veterans Stadium. Here's a pitch out, and nothing was happening with Johnstone, so it's two balls and one strike to Maddox. Phillies will not be back here until the 29th of May, a Monday night game against the Pittsburgh Pirates. John Stone is going. The pitch to Maddox is laced down the left field line, but foul. A one-hopper into the picnic area with John Stone running on the pitch. He was going to really do some lumbering on that one. He was all the way around second. Well, as Whitey would say, you can usually bet your house on that play with a 2-1 count, and especially after the Houston Astros had just called for a pitch out. That's a perfect time to hit and run, and that's exactly what the Phillies tried to do then was start John Stone and hit and run with Gary Maddox, and he really ripped that thing, but just foul. Two and two on Maddox. Nobody out in the inning. John Stone, who walked us at first. Lemon Jello stretches. Here's the pitch. Swinging a foul back to the screen. Phillies have won seven of their last nine ball games. And they are 14 and 9 on this still young season. Throw to first base. Jay back head first. on Maddox. The young right-hander stretches. Here's the pitch to Gary. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Maddox goes out on a fastball, and that's the first strikeout for Lemon Jello. Here's Bob Boone. Boone hitting a 264. Bob failed to get any RBIs last night, breaking a streak of having knocked in runs in five consecutive games in which he had played.
Well, can the Phillies do to Tom Seaver tomorrow what they did to him last time in Cincinnati? Knock him out of the ball game and winning by a 12-1 to score. They'll try tomorrow night when the Reds move in town. The pitch to Boone is a slider low, ball one. No score in the game. Phillies batting in the last of the second inning. Boone takes another slider just a little low, two and nothing. Bob with three home runs, and he has knocked in 14. Lemon Jello has the sign. Here's his pitch. In for a strike call. Got the slider over that time after missing with two previous sliders. Boone takes a swing and fouls one back. Two balls and two strikes to Bob Boone. Twenty-two-year-old Mark Lemangelo, starting against the Phillies for only the third time. What a rocky start he had last year. He lost eleven of his first twelve ball games. Stretching the pitch to Boone, swinging a ground ball to third. Cabell has a little trouble picking it out. Throws to second for a force, and that's all they get. Boone safe at first on the force out at second, as Jay Johnstone was erased on the ground ball to Cabell. Two outs in the inning. Until he's got a break on that because that was a double play ball to Enos Cabell and he's down there looking at his glove right now figuring why he couldn't get it out of there. And just that little bit of hesitation he took allowed Bob Boone to beat it out and keep the inning alive. Maybe Lenny Randall left his glove here. <laughs> Randall was having the same kind of problems here the other night. Yeah, he really had the drop season in this series. They finally, it got so bad they finally sat him down on Sunday. Here's Jim Morrison batting at 280, rookie second baseman. Pitch on the way to Morrison. Low inside, ball one. Morrison playing in only his ninth ball game tonight of this year. He was up briefly at the end of last season. Incidentally, Ted Sizemore was here at the ballpark tonight. Says things are going well in his mending process. Here's a check throw to first base, not in time to get Boone. Someone else would say Bob Boone really looks a runnerish. The Phillies like to run with two outs in these situations. Morrison, long drive to left field, way back, it is gone! Jim Morrison has hit his first Major League home run, and the Phillies lead the ball game two to nothing. A no doubt about it smash for Morrison, who homers for a taste of tasty cake and one for the Lafayette School. Oh, that's super. Jimmy Morrison, uh, really a good kid. We were talking about him a lot, and really jumped on a high pitch from Lemon Jello. It might have been a high... That was a high fastball, and he got all of it and put it in the seats in left field. And he said his power will surprise you. You know, that ball really jumped out of here. And failure of the Houston Astros to complete that double play gives the Phillies two runs. And the crowd still buzzing as Jim Lundborg stands at the plate. The pitch to Lonnie is low, ball one. Jim batting 182 with two hits and 11 tries this year. And a little delayed reaction by the scoreboard. Here's a swing and a foul. We had a little firecracker going off there to salute the first Major League home run for Jim Morrison. That one was on about a 20-second delay. That's <laughs> One ball and one strike to Lonborg. Wind up in the pitch by Lemon Jello. Swing and a miss as Lonnie went around weakly. Lemon Jello misses low, two and two. That is the sixth home run given up by Lemon Jello. That is high on the Houston staff. It's quite a few home runs to have given up at this stage of the season. Here's the two two to Lonborg. Swing and a miss. He strikes him out, and the inning is over. But the Phillies get two runs on Morrison's home run, one hit in the inning, and nobody left on base. At the end of two, the Phillies lead it two to nothing. Now time for a taste. Taste. Well, the crowd is still stirred up over Jimmy Morrison's first major league home run. A no doubt about it shot to left field. He really hit that ball on the button. So the Phillies have a 2-0 start tonight. And here is pitcher Mark Lemangelo to lead off the third for the Astros. Lemangelo batting at 143 as one hit and seven tries. Lonborg to face off against Lemangelo. The Mets lead the Montreal Expos 2-1 at the end of an inning tonight in Montreal. A breaking ball is low, ball one. Nino Espinosa pitching for the Mets. Rudy May going for the Expos. 
This afternoon, Pittsburgh beat San Francisco 5-1. to one. Hard hit ground ball in the hole of ace at the left field. Lemangelo looked like a hitter on that one as he jumped on a pitch and laced it between Boa and Schmidt for a base hit. That is only the second hit for the Astros. Lemangelo will put the warm-up jacket on at first. And Terry Poole will hit. Cincinnati and Atlanta are not scheduled today. Later, St. Louis will play at Los Angeles and Chicago at San Diego. Boston leads Baltimore one to nothing at the end of an inning and a half. Alan Ripley pitching against Mike Flanagan. Seattle and Cleveland scoreless in the last of the second. Rick Honeycutt against Rick Wise. Pitch to the left-handed batting pool is outside ball one. Oakland and Toronto scoreless at the end of two. Rick Langford against Jim Clancy. Later, Minnesota at Chicago and Texas at Milwaukee. Four American League teams, including the Yankees, are not scheduled. Here's Poole bluffing a bunt, and the pitch is over for a strike call. One ball, one strike. The other American League teams not playing today, California, Detroit, and Kansas City. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Poole. Breaking ball, tap to first base. Johnstone has it, goes over to Boa. There's one, back to first, safe. A collision at first base between Johnstone and Lonborg, and Lonnie went down. He has dirt all over his uniform. Jay actually took the relay throw, but Lonnie went down in a spill, but they did not get the man at first base. That'll go as a force out. 3-6-3 or 3-6-1 double play is probably one of the toughest ones in all of baseball because you've got two fielders coming to a position, and... Lonnie was trying to get out of the way of Jay Johnstone on that, and he banged into him a little bit. And Jay Ray made a really fine play on that by getting the ball over to Boa, gave him the good toss up high where he could see it. A tough double play to make, though. One out of the inning. Here's Enos Cabell, who struck out. Throw to first base. Back in time is Poole. The Astros have a single by Lamangelo and a triple by Poole off Lonborg so far in this game. That's it. Swing and a hard hit ball to Boa. Over to Morris, and there's one to first double play. <laughs> Phillies out of the inning on a twin killing. And for the Astros, no runs, one hit, and nobody left. At the end of two and a half, Phillies lead two to nothing. A luxury car ought to give you your money's worth of luxury. Here's McBride to lead it off. Big double his first time up to keep his batting streak alive. Here's a foul back strike one. He has now hit safely in eight straight. Did anybody ask who holds the, the best fielding percentage for a shortstop in the history of baseball? We both could have answered that. <laughs> he would have loved to have that question. Hey, I did get one that uh, had to do with Whitey, though, and I happen to know it. Pitch on the way to McBride. Breaking ball is foul back. Question was, who holds the Phillies' all-time record for grounding into fewest double plays in a season? And the answer not only is Whitey, but it's only one. In a whole season? Yeah. And that is amazing. Well, he could run. It's two pitch to McBride, foul back. I got a kick out of Whitey last year after he played here in the old-timers game, came back to the broadcast booth that night, and said right into this microphone, I'm washed up. <laughs> What'd you say? Who don't know that? <laughs> Here's the 0-2 to McBride. Fly ball left field. It'll stay in the ballpark, though Poole is retreating on it. And he catches it just shy of the warning track. McBride flies out to left field. First out of the third inning. One of the things Bake did so well last year was to hit the ball that way. And uh, last night he got one out of here, hit a double hard. And that was an off-speed pitch. And he just got out in front of that a little bit and still hit it a long way. So that'll really help his average, too, to keep hitting the ball that way. Here's Larry Boa, his second try tonight. And Larry takes a strike call and a fastball over the outside corner. Boa was trying to bunt and sacrifice McBride over in the first inning, but his bunt went right to the pitcher, and McBride didn't move, so he did not get a sacrifice. Pitch to Larry, check swing, but it's a strike on the outside corner, and Larry in the hole, nothing in two. Boa has batted safely in eight straight. He and Bake each have eight-game hitting streaks now, and that's the longest for a Philly this year. During Larry's streak, he has batted at a 4.28 pace. Here's the 0-2 pitch to him. It's outside. One ball, two strikes to Boa. Batting at 314. Phillies lead the Astros 2 to nothing as they bat in the third. Lemangelo winds, and here's the pitch. Curveball, and he just missed. Two and two. Right-hander winds, here's his pitch to Boa, it's outside, and we've got a full count as Larry battles back from an 0-2. 
Here's the payoff pitch to Boa. It's a pop-up. It's in foul ground off third. Cabell coming over. He is out of room as it drops into the fourth row. So Boa hangs in there with a full count, three balls and two strikes. Remember, tomorrow night's start is 7.35. Tickets are available to see one of the pitching classics. Left-hander Steve Carlton, right-hander Tom Seaver. The 3-2 to Boa, fastball outside, and Larry's aboard with the base on balls. Second walk given up by Lemon Jello. Philly's a runner with one out for Mike Schmidt. A good at bat by Boa there. One of the things that happens when he's hitting like he is right now is he's, he's more confident at the plate and he'll take pitches, and he was 0-2 then to Lemon Jello and took some close pitches and wound up getting himself a walk. And that's all in the confidence that comes with when you're hitting the ball. Here's Mike Schmidt who flied out to right field. Mike still leading the National League in runs with 25, but Joe Morgan right behind at 24. Davey Lopes at 23. Lemangelo steps off the rubber. Schmitty had scored in seven straight ball games prior to last night's. Check throw to first base, chases Boa back. Larry can run, of course, and he gets a good lead. Stretching the pitch to Schmidt. Fastball high, ball one. Mike with five homers and 17 runs batted in. Boa has stolen five bases. He has been thrown out twice, including once last night. Pitch to Schmidt. Very high fly ball into deep right field, but it'll stay in the park. Cruz drifting back on it, and he takes it for the out. Boa bluffs a tag at first, but he's not going anywhere as Schmidt flies out to right field for the second time. Hit this one a lot harder than he did his first. That's two down. And Greg Luzinski with Boa at first. Ball flight out to right field. Greg, the Phillies leader in home runs with six. And in RBIs with 18. Phillies have a home run tonight by Morrison. It's the fifth straight game in which the Phillies have had at least one home run. Check throw to first base. Boa is back. Again. Lemangelo checks Boa back to first. Pirates winners today by a 5-1 to one score at San Francisco. Pitch to the ball, high, ball one. That victory for the Pirates evens their record of 13-13. and 13, Tied with the Chicago Cubs. Two and a half games behind the Phillies. Here's another throw to first base, not in time to get Boa. Lemangelo stretches. The pitch to Luzinski is fouled to the screen. So hard it wedges there. One ball, one strike on the ball. Greg has batted safely in 13 of the last 16 Phillies games. Well, he just had a real good swing at a Lemangelo pitch that time. Uh, when a hitter will foul a ball straight back like Luzinski just did, it means that he just missed it, and that's one of his better swings. Next pitch to the ball is inside. He backed him away. Two and one the count. Pitcher will see that too, and a lot of times that's what will happen. He'll come back with a breaking ball away from the hitter, or I'll try and push him back a little bit because he saw what a good swing he had at him. Mets two, Expos one, that game in the third inning at Olympic Stadium in Montreal. Lemangelo walks off behind the mound to rub up the baseball. Two balls and one strike on Greg Luzinski. Here's the pitch to the ball. Hard hit to left field, but foul all the way. A real rope. He hung that one out over top the picnic area. A ball that was really stung, but foul from the moment it left the bat. Yeah, he's right on this guy. <laughs> you could see that on that, uh, that swing he had that we talked about. And he, Greg got himself out in front a little bit on that pitch. He's getting some good swings at Lemon Jello right now. Count level at two and two. Two outs, Boa at first base. Phillies ahead, two nothing. The pitch to Luzinski. It's a pop-up. Shallow left field. The shortstop Metzger is back and making the call. He's chased off of it now by the left fielder Poole, who catches it for the out. So for the Phillies in the third, no runs, no hits, and one man left. Harry Callis will have the play-by-play -play in a moment. At the end of three, the Phillies leading. Phillies leading at 2 nothing. Harry Callis along with Chris Wheeler and our engineer Maureen Shaughnessy from Veterans Stadium. Leading off for the Houston Astros will be... Cesar Cedeno, the center fielder. He walked his first time up. Cedeno is off to a good start. Hitting 286 last year at this time. He was hitting about 130. 
As of June 22nd, Sedania was batting only 179. Still finished hitting 279. But it took a torrid month of September where he hit over 400 in the month of September. Jim Lomborg ready to work to Cesar Cedeno, and here's the pitch to him. Swing and a long drive to deep left field. This ball is out of here, a home run. Cedeno jumped on a fastball and sent it over the fence and left for his fifth home run of the year, and it's now a two-to-one ball game. The Phillies' lead is cut in half. Well, the first inning, the uh, Houston Astros had a runner on third base, and I think there was one out, and Cedeno was up, and the Phillies obviously pitched around him and walked him in that situation, and you just saw why. Lonborg gave him something to hit that time, and he really is a quality player, and he jumped all over that pitch. That's why they pitched around him. So it's a 2-1 ball game. The Phillies lead it. Here's Jose Cruz, and the pitch to him is high for a ball. Cruz grounded into a fielder's choice his first time up. Lomborg's 1-0 pitch. High again, ball two. It's 2-0 two to Cruz. Here's the 2-0 pitch to Cruz. He swings and he misses at a breaking ball. 2-1 ball game, fourth inning, Phillies lead. All the runs coming on the homer. Pitch is high for a ball. It's 3-1. But third base umpire Dick Stello said that Cruz went around, so it's two and two. Jim Morrison, a two-run home run for the Phillies in the second. Cesar Cedeno, a solo homer here in the fourth. 2-2 two -two pitch, swing and a foul back up over the screen and out of play. Stays two and two to Cruz. Lombard's 2-2 pitch. High and away, ball three, full count. Here's a 3-2 pitch to Cruz, bouncing foul down the first base side. It remains three and two. The arc leading Montreal, two to one at the end of two. That's Nino Espinosa against Rudy May. Pittsburgh beat San Francisco this afternoon, 5-1 behind Burt Blylevin. 3-2 pitch, swing a line drive, base hit right field. Fake McBride gets it back into the infield, and Jose Cruz lines a single to right. Hit number four given up by Lomborg, that'll bring up Bob Watson. Watson popped up to Mike Schmidt his first time up. Lifetime 300 hitter in the major leagues, Bob Watson. Set a Houston club record for runs batted in last year with 110. There's a pitch to Watson. Swings and he misses. One strike to Bob Watson. Jose Cruz at first base and nobody out. Cruz a threat to steal. He pilfered 44 last year. Pitch to Watson is low for a ball. It's one and one. Ball on the strike to Bob Watson. Lomborg's 1-1 pitch. Line shot to deep left field. Luzinski back at the warning track. Makes the running catch. Cruz will hold out at first base. Watson gave it a pretty good ride to left. Caught by Luzinski at the rim of the warning track. One down. We'll pause for station identification on the Phil's Baseball Network. At 831, this is KYW Philadelphia at the Spectrum. Midway through the first quarter, the 76ers led the Washington Bullets 15-6. to six. Here's Art Howe, the second baseman. He flied out to left his first time up. Cruz at first base, one out. Phillies lead 2-1, fourth inning. There goes Cruz, the pitch is high, the throw by Boone, not in time. Stolen base, Jose Cruz, he had a tremendous jump. His fourth steal of the year, he has not been caught, and Boone had no prayer. That's one of those situations right there where you just can't get on the catcher at all. 
Jose Cruz, like Harry said, had 44 stolen bases last year, and he timed that perfectly. He just It was like he knew exactly the moment Jim Lonborg was going to make the move to home plate, and he was gone. So Cruz at second base and one out. The 1-0 pitch to Howe. He swings and he misses. Ball and a strike to Art Howe. Phillies lead 2-1, fourth inning. Lomborg stretches. Pitch to Howe is low for a ball. It's two balls and a strike. Gene Garber is starting to throw in the Phillies bullpen. Here's Lomborg's stretch. And the pitch to Howe. Check swing foul. Lined on top of the Phillies dugout. Two and two the count to Art Howe. Houston goes from here to New York to take on the New York Mets. And Cincinnati will be coming in here tomorrow night to open a four-game series. Steve Carlton and Tom Seaver tomorrow night plan to be on hand for that pitching matchup. 2-2 pitch. Swing a bouncing ball to third base. Schmidt tried to tag the runner. Could not, but he gets how at first base. Jose Cruz running by Mike Schmidt. Schmidt tried to tag him, couldn't reach out far enough to nail him, but he got the runner at first, Art Howe, for out number two. Good try by Schmidt. A lot of times he can chase a base runner like that, and you'll force him to run out of the baseline, and the umpire will call him out. But Cruz did not run out of the baseline. He just had a ducky shoulder a little bit because Schmidt didn't have a chance to get him. But it just shows you how good he is. And then he came up throwing and made a perfect play to first. So Cruz at third base with two outs. Here's Joe Ferguson. He struck out his first time up. Lomborg stretches. The pitch to Ferguson is over for a strike call. Ferguson not hitting for average. He's hitting 211, but he's tied for Houston's club leadership and homers with five. Ian Cedeno each have five. One strike pitch. Swing and a bat handle pop up towards short. Larry Boa there. He squeezes it, and Houston goes down in the fourth. The Astros score a run on two hits. Big blow, a homer by Cedeno. No errors and one left. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. It's Phil's two, Houston one. Now it's time for... Bottom half of the fourth inning. Jay Johnstone will lead off for the Phil's. Let's check the Major League scoreboard. Boston has won seven in a row, and they're going for their eighth at Baltimore tonight. They lead the Orioles 1-0 in the bottom of the third. Alan Ripley for the Red Sox. Mike Flanagan for Baltimore. Seattle and Cleveland, nothing, nothing after two. Rick Honeycutt against Rick Wise. Toronto leads Oakland three to one after three behind Jim Clancy. Minnesota and Chicago, Texas and Milwaukee just now getting underway. Here's the pitch to Johnstone. A bunt down the third base side. Base hit. Brilliant bunt single by Jay Johnstone. So Johnstone gets off the Snyder with a bunt single. His first hit of the year. Give him the ball. Yeah? <laughs> They're throwing it out. He just threw the ball out. <laughs> he said he was going to do that when he finally got his hit. He wanted the ball, but he hardly even bruised that one. Perfectly placed bunt down the third baseline by Jay Johnstone. His first hit of the year. The Phillies' third hit off Lemon Jello. That'll bring up Gary Maddox, who struck out his first time up. Throw to first. Johnstone gets back. Here's a stretch by Lemon Jello. And the pitch to Maddox is high for a ball. One and nothing to Gary Maddox. Phillies leading two to one, bottom half of the fourth. Lemon Jello's pitch to Maddox swings and he misses at a breaking ball. Following a strike to Maddox. Now the stretch by Lemon Jello. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a fly ball right field deep. Cruz drifting back. Makes the catch and John Stone will have to hold on at first base. Maddox hit it well to the opposite field. Caught by Cruz. One down. That'll bring up Bob Boone. Boone was safe on a fielder's choice his first time up. The inability really of Houston to turn a double play on that ground ball when Enos Cabell could not get it out of his glove cost Lemon Jello the two runs because Morrison followed that fielder's choice ground ball with a homer. Here's a pitch to Boone. It's high for a ball, one and nothing. 
Jay Johnstone, first base, and one out. 1-0 pitch to Boone, swing and a bad handle pop up behind second base. Art Howe is there, he puts it away. Boone is out, two down. That'll bring up Jim Morrison. He's accounted for the Phillies' runs with a two-run home run. His first big league homer. Morrison gets a big round of applause as he comes up. Jay Johnstone at first base and two outs. Bottom half of the fourth inning. There's a stretch by Lemon Jello. And the pitch to Morrison. Swing, fly ball, left center field. Terry Poole is there. And he puts it away, and the Phillies go down in the fourth. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. At the end of four, it's Phil's two, Houston one. Two years ago, Plymouth introduced the most successful car in its history, Polaris. Today, we've got it in three styles that all give you your money's worth. The Slant 6 Coupe that gets better mileage than any six-cylinder automatic build in America. The sedan that's roomiest in its class. And the wagon that's become the number one selling wagon in America over the past two years. Coupe, sedan, or wagon. Polari gives you your money's worth. See it today at your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. It's no disgrace going back to the place where the fun and the chase was started. And so we laugh and joy tonight, share a fault tonight, like we're running all the king. We'll sing the songs we used to sing. Fifth inning baseball, Phillies leading 2-1. Roger Metzger will lead off for the Houston Astros. Metzger grounded back to the mound his first time up. Phillies 2 coming on a two-run homer by Jim Morrison. Houston getting a solo home run from Cesar Cedeno. There's a pitch on the way to Metzger, and he takes high for a ball. In an exhibition game, Richmond is leading Atlanta after 5, 3-0. The only reason that's of interest is that Jim Bowden is pitching for Richmond. Swing and a high pop-up behind second base. Larry Boa waving people off, and Maddox calls off Boa and makes the catch. Metzger is out, one down. And Bowden has the Atlanta Braves shut out through five in his bid to make a comeback. That'll bring on Mark Lemangelo. There's a pitch on the way to Lemon Jello, and it's inside for a ball. He singled his first time up for one of Houston's four hits. 1 0 pitch on the way to Lemon Jello is over for a strike call. It's 1 and 1. One-one pitch, swaying and a pop-up into shallow right, drifting out is Jim Morris in the second baseman, and he makes the catch. Almost went by him, but Morrison pulled it out. Two down. That'll bring up Terry Poole. Poole is tripled and grounded into a fielder's choice. Fifth think, inning, Phillies leading it two to one. I think Jim Morrison was half looking for one of the outfielders to call him off that play, but the ball wasn't hit that high, and he had it all the way, and he kind of stumbled just as he caught it, and the crowd kind of reacted to it. There's the pitch to Poole, swaying and a little bouncing foul back behind the plate. One strike to count to Poole. Made good use of the rain out, Chris, by seeing the Rocco sisters in Reading. <laughs> the Sheraton, great act. Fans in Reading plan to go over there and see the gals. They're super and very good friends of ours. Understand they are very, very exciting to watch. Yes, they are. Pitch to Poole is low for a ball, and it's one and one. Understand the Sheraton also made an awful lot of money off your dinner. <laughs> we had a delightful dinner there. One one pitch is high for a ball. It's two and one. Especially what a company dinner. 
Two outs, no base runners. Two and one, the count to pool. Here's the two one pitch. Slow for a ball. Three and one, the count to Terry Pool. Lomborg has his sign from Bob Boone. Three one pitch. Over for a strike call. A full count to Terry Pool. Pool hit 301 in his rookie year last year for Houston. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Swing, a line shot into right center field. Maddox there makes the catch. Gary got a good jump on the ball and plucked it out of the air to retire the side. No runs, hits or errors, and none left. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Hills lead Houston 2-1. to one. Time was, station wagons only came in one size, big. And if you wanted good mileage, you were out of luck. Valare gives you your money's worth of room and mileage of 25 on the highway, 18 in the city. That's an EPA estimate for a wagon with 225, one barrel engine, and manual transmission. Your mileage may differ. It also has the high resale value you're looking for. No wonder Valare's been the number one selling wagon in America over the past two years. It gives you your money's worth when you buy and when you sell. See you today at your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. At Warren's 16 card and gift shops, men get special help while selecting gifts for birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Polite and friendly salespeople guide you, and you'll have each gift wrapped free at Warren's, where shopping is a pleasure. Warren's card and gift shops have wonderful gifts to give or to keep for yourself. Glass and brass, copper and pewter, hummels and hallmark, candles and lamps, leather goods, all wrapped free at the wonderful world of Warren's. You've never seen such wonders. Visit our Warren's card and gift shop in the West Goshen Shopping Center. Jim Lomborg, the lead off for the Phillies, bottom half of the fifth inning. Phillies leading it 2-1. 3,000 hit Pete Rose, George Foster, Joe Morgan, John Bench and company will be here at Veterans Stadium for four big games starting tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, the pitching matchup is an excellent one. Steve Carlton going against Tom Seaver. On Friday night at 8.05, it'll be Randy Lurch and Bill Bonham. Saturday night, 7.35, Jim Cotton and Fred Norman. And on Sunday, Larry Christensen and Tom Hume. Here's the first pitch to Lomborg, swing and a ground foul down the third base side. One strike to count to Lomborg, who struck out his first time up. Mark Lemangelo winds in the next pitch. Bunt down the first base side foul. Lomborg trying to bunt his way on, but he spun the ball foul. It's nothing in two to him. Three for all ladies on Sunday against Cincinnati. It'll be a ladies' canvas tote bag, courtesy of the Phillies and Tasty Cake. Here's the two-strike pitch. Swing and a punch shot into center field. It's going to drop for a base hit. Lomborg punched a fastball into center field for the Phillies' fourth hit off Lemon Jello. So Lottie is a base runner at first base and nobody out. It brings up Bake McBride. Bake has doubled and flied out to deep left. He's hit safely now in eight straight games. Jim Lomborg, first base, nobody out, bottom of the fifth. Billy's leading it two to one on Jim Morrison's two-run homer. Stretch by Lemon Jello, the pitch to Bake, fastball on the outside corner for a strike call. Now the stretch by Mark Lemon Jello and his pitch. Bake takes low it inside, it's one and one. For the most part, uh, teams really like to pitch Bake McBride in. That is supposed to be his weakness, but Houston, for the most part, pitches him away, as evidenced by the way he's been hitting the ball to left field. He likes the ball out over the plate. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing. He had a cut and he fouled it straight back. A ball and two strikes to Bake McBride. They also play him around to the opposite field. Sedano shading him to left center field. Well, he'll surprise you with the way he can drive the ball to left field. I know we commented a lot on that last year of how the ball jumps off his bat to the opposite field. And last night he hit one out of here. And tonight he's hit two balls well to the opposite field. And you pitch him out there, he'll go that way. 
There's a stretch by Lemon Jello. One two pitch. Swing and a foul back up over the screen. It stays a ball and two strikes to McBride. Lomborg at first base and nobody out. New York and Montreal through three. The Mets lead the Expos two to one. Nino Espinosa against Rudy May. Here's the pitch to Bake. Outside for a ball. It's two and two. Twenty-two-year-old Mark Lemongello stretches. The 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. He got him with a pitch on the outside corner. That'll be the third strikeout for Lemon Jello. One down in the fifth. That brings up Larry Boa. Boa's 0 for 1. He was thrown out on a bunt try in his walk. Larry coming into the game with an eight-game hitting streak going for him. That's the Phillies' longest of the year. Larry and Bake each hitting in eight games. Pitch to Boa. Swing and a pop foul. Back up and off to our right. One strike to count to Boa, Lomborg at first and one out. Here's a stretch by Lemon Jello. One strike pitch, a change missing outside. That's his pound ball. Lemon Jello throws a fastball slider and his change is a pound ball. I don't want to count. Here's his stretch. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a ground ball. Base hit right field. Lomborg will stop at second base. Larry Bowen now is it safely in nine straight games. Chris, I can't remember Bowen off to a better start than this one. No, Harry, he really is off to a good start. And... The reason is he's just hitting the ball so well left-handed. He's, he's, hitting, he's hitting the ball to all fields left-handed. He's getting his infield hits left-handed. He, uh, he's really in total command of his game that way. What he's disappointed in is the way he's hitting the ball right-handed. Let's see. Coming into the game tonight, Larry was hitting left-handed at a 390 clip and right-handed 189. Here's Mike Schmidt. Mike's been up twice. Twice he has flied out to right field. Lomborg at second. Bow at first and one out. Here's the pitch to Schmidt. He tried to check, but he committed himself on a low breaking ball. One strike to count to Mike Schmidt. Mark Lemongello. That's his sign from Ferguson. Lomborg moves off second. Bow off first. One strike pitch. Swing and a drive into deep left center field. Way back goes Poole. And he leaps up and makes the catch against the fence. Lomborg tags and moves to third. And Bo will hold it first. Terry Poole timed his jump perfectly. And speared it against the fence in deep left center. At the 371 foot mark. Oh so close to being out of here. The heck of a play by Terry Poole. Uh he went back and found the wall, and like Harry said, timed his jump perfectly. And Mike Schmidt didn't look like he had a very good swing at that ball and hit it 370 feet. It just shows you how strong he is. Lomborg moved to third after the catch. Ball holding at first base. That'll bring up Greg Luzinski. The ball is flied out to right and flied out to left. Boy, the Astros were looking around. It almost looked like they were going to appeal Lomborg leaving too early. Throw to first base. Larry Boa gets back. Another quick throw, and again, Boa is back. Phillies lead 2-1. We're playing in the bottom of the fifth. Here's the pitch to Luzinski, and it's wide for a ball. One and nothing to count to Greg Luzinski. Greg tied for second in the league in home runs with six. Stocked in 18 runs. 1-0 pitch to the ball is 0 for a ball. It's 2-0. Jim Lomborg at third. He's singled. Larry Bow at first. He's singled. Two outs. Here's the 2-0 pitch. 
Over for a strike call. Two and one the count to Luzinski. Lemon Jello's 2-1 pitch. Missing outside, it's 3-1. So Greg will look for a fastball that he can drive. Lemon Jello's really stayed away from Bull on this at bat, too. Every pitch has been on the outside part of the plate, and knowing Greg, he might look for something in. 3-1 pitch. Swing and a pop foul back into the upper deck. Full count to Luzinski. Lomborg at third. Boa will be breaking from first with two outs. Mark Lemangelo wants a different baseball from plate umpire Bruce Fremming. Lemangelo was 12 and 15 last year. Now he wants still another ball. Fremming heaves it out there. Good fastball thrown by Bruce. Full count to Luzinski. 3-2 pitch. Swing and a foul ball back out of play into the press area. Jay Dunn of the Trentonian got that ball. A lot of bad hands in that press box, so they usually play him on the carom. Jay did play that on the carom. <laughs> Jack Carney was bailing out. He should. <laughs> 3-2 pitch. Outside ball four. He walked him till he's had the bases loaded. Boa moves up to second base. Sacks jam. Lomborg at third. Boa at second. Luzinski at first. Two outs. And here's Jay Johnstone. Johnstone has walked and picked up a fun single his first hit of the year. Ken Force starting to throw on the Houston bullpen. Bottom of the fifth. Phillies lead it 2-1. to one. up by Lemon Jello. Pitch to John Stone is over for a strike call. One strike to John Stone. Here's the one strike pitch. Swing and a foul ball back and out of play and Lemon Jello in front of Jay. Nothing in two. Bases loaded. Two outs. Bottom of the fifth. Jim Lomborg at third, Larry Boa second, Greg Luzinski first, two outs. Lemon Jello's two strike pitch. Fastball outside, it's one and two. Here's his windup, the one two pitch. Fastball high and away, it's two and two. A little surprised that he hasn't thrown that palm ball when he got in front of John Stone, but he came in with a couple of heaters. Here's the two two pitch. Outside with a fastball, it's a full count. Now he has little choice. Base is loaded, two outs, three and two, the count to John Stone. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Low ball four. He walked him to force in a run. Phillies lead it 3-1. to one. Well, after getting in front of Johnstone, no balls and two strikes. Lemoncello threw four straight balls. Mel Wright, the pitching coach, coming out to talk to him. They especially have to give him some credit because you have to think Johnstone's so anxious to hit a ball hard somewhere and get a base hit. And sees all those runners on base and it had to be tough for him to stand there and take those pitches. The two of them were very close. One of them was way high and out of the strike zone, but two of them were right there where he might take a swing at him. So give Jay Johnstone a lot of credit there for having so much patience. And let's pause here for station identification along the Phil's Baseball Network. At 859, this is KYW Philadelphia. AccuWeather says clearing and cool tonight, the low 48. Tomorrow, sun and warm with an afternoon high near 80. Right now, 62 degrees and cloudy on Independence Mall. Here's Gary Maddox. He has struck out and flied out to right field. Bases loaded, two outs, a run in. Lemon Jello's pitch to Maddox. Swing and a high pop-up in the shallow right field. Art Howe going out. The second baseman called off by Cruz, who makes the catch. And the Phillies are down in the fifth. 
Phillies score a run, though, on two hits. No errors, three left. And after five, it's Phillies. Bob Boone to lead off for the Phillies. Bottom half of the sixth inning. Phillies leading by a score of 3-1. Two runs coming on Jim Morrison's first big league home run in the second. And the third run on a bases loaded walk to Jay Johnstone. Boone is grounded into a fielder's choice and popped up. Wind up by Lemon Jello and the pitch to Boone is a change that's low for a ball. Here's a 1-0 pitch to Booney, a slider that misses low. It's 2 and nothing. Lemon Jello has struck out three. He's walked three. The 2-0 pitch to Boone is low and inside. Ball three, three and nothing. Boone looking down at Bill DeMars to see if he can swing at this pitch. Here's the 3-0 pitch. Taking all the way, and it's a called strike. Three and one to Bob Boone. Three-one pitch to Booney is low ball four. He walked him. Walk number five issued by Mark Lemongello. So Boone, a base runner with nobody out, it brings up Jim Morrison. Morrison has hit a two-run home run, his first in the major league, and has flied out to left. Bob Boone, base runner at first base, and nobody out. Stretch by Lemon Jello. Pitch to Morrison, swing and a foul back up over the screen. One strike to Jim Morrison. Morrison batting 296. Bottom of the sixth at Baltimore. The Red Sox and Baltimore are tied 1 1. Here's a pitch to Morrison that's wide for a ball, one and one. Baltimore's run coming out of Homer by Ken Singleton. Ken Porsche and Joe Sambito, right hander, left hander up in the Houston bullpen. One one pitch. Swing and a foul back to the screen. Lemon Jello is in front of Morrison, a ball and two strikes. The thing you notice about Jim Morrison since he's been up here, he may strike out, but boy, he gets his reps at home plate. He's had two really good swings this at bat. Ball and two strikes to Morrison. Boone at first and nobody out. One two pitch. Fastball grounded to third baseman Cabell. Throws to Howe. One the relay. They turn the double play. So Morrison grounds into a double play. Two outs and nobody on base. That'll bring up Jim Lombard. Lonnie has struck out, singled, and scored a run. Two outs and no base runners. Phillies leading 3-1, bottom half of the sixth inning. The pitch to Lomborg. Swing and a bouncing ball to shortstop. Roger Metzger has it and throws, and Lomborg is out. Phillies down in the sixth. No runs, hits or errors, and none left. After six, it's Phillies three and Houston one. I just saved myself a trip to the bank and a trip to the post office. I've got this new thing going with George Bank by phone from Gerard Bank. Just paid a month's worth of bills, did a whole pile of banking. I even gave myself a loan. Oh, sure, a few other banks have pay by phone, but Gerard lets me pay and bank by phone. You know, it's almost like having a Gerard Bank right here in my kitchen. Ask for a demonstration of George Bank by phone at any Gerard Bank office. One of the best ways for you and your friends to have a night out on the town that you'll never forget is to attend a Phillies game at a group outing. Just pick out a date and call the Phil's group sales experts at HO3-5000 and let them do the rest. A group outing at the Phillies is fun for everyone, so make that phone call. Call HO3-5000 and come down to the vet for all the excitement of Phillies baseball. Remember, Cincinnati will be moving in tomorrow night. Steve Carlton going against Tom Seaver tomorrow night. 
7.35 game time. Again on Friday night at 8.05. Friday night's pitching matchup, Randy Lurch and Bill Bottom. Saturday night at 7.35, it'll be Jim Cott and Fred Norman. And on Sunday afternoon, Larry Christensen and Tom Hume. Cincinnati for four big games starting tomorrow night. Art Howe will lead off for Houston here in the seventh inning. Howe has flied out to left and grounded out. Cincinnati won an exhibition game tonight by a score of 3-0 over Detroit. Doug Capella, who was just sent out by Cincinnati, pitched that shutout. The New York Mets have scored two more on Montreal. They lead the Expos 4-1 after five behind Nino Espinosa. Here's Lomborg's pitch to Art Howe on the inside corner at the knees for a called strike. One strike pitch to Howe, a little bouncing foul off to the left of the plate, and Lomborg is in front of him, nothing in two. Seventh inning, Phil's lead, 3-1. Wind up by Lomborg, the two-strike pitch, breaking ball, slammed to deep left center field. Maddox on his horse, he's there and makes the catch. So Howe flies out to deep left center, one down. That'll bring up Joe Ferguson, the catcher. Ferguson has struck out and popped up to Larry Boa. Tug McGraw is starting to throw in the Phillies' bullpen. In the event, Lomborg runs into late-inning trouble. Phillies lead this one 3-1. Pitch to Ferguson is low for a ball. One-zero pitch to Ferguson, swing and a pop foul behind the plate. Boone is off with a mask, but he runs out of room as it lands in the first row behind the Phillies dugout. One ball and one strike to count to Joe Ferguson. One out and no base runners. Seventh inning and the Phils lead at three-one. Here's Lomborg's 1-1 pitch. Swing and a ground ball foul down the third base side. Ball and two strikes to count to Ferguson. Houston's run coming on a Cesar Cedeno home run in the fourth inning. 1-2 pitch. Oh, for a ball. It's 2-2 two and two to Ferguson. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Inside a full count. Three and two to Joe Ferguson with one out. Here's the 3-2 pitch to him. Swing and a ground ball. Deep short backhanded Boa. Long throw. Great play, Boa. Ferguson out at first base. Boa deep into the hole and gunned down Joe Ferguson for out number two. Play wasn't even close either. That was, was such a great play about Boa. Ferguson doesn't run all that well, but Harry, you were talking about his offense earlier in the game. Well, his defense, the last, I would say the last week has been about as good as he can play, too. Excellent D by Larry Boa. Good play there. Pay the tennis tonight, 20,096. We're going to get a pinch hitter for Roger Medsker. Dennis Walling coming out of the Houston dugout to bat for Roger Medsker. Dennis Walling. Sitting 231, 3 for 13, 2 runs batted in. Dennis Walling, a left hand here. Batting for Roger Medsker. Walling is 24 years old. He comes out of Neptune, New Jersey. Last year, he had a fine year at Charleston where he hit 348. Walling takes a strike call. One strike to Dennis Walling. Billy's leading 3-1, seventh inning. Here's the pitch to Walling, and it bounces up there for a ball. One and one.
Romborg roughs up the baseball. Two outs and no base runners. 1-1 pitch to Walling. Swing and a bouncing ball. Tap to first baseman Jay Johnstone. And he tags the runner in the base path. Walling is out. The Astros go down and turn in the seventh. No runs, hits, or errors, and none left. We go to the bottom of the seventh. It's Phil's three and Houston one. The day is done. It's time to let it go. It's the moment to unwind. Welcome So gently, bud. And pour the king of men and settle back and please yourself. No matter what you do, no matter when or where, you know a glass of blood is like an easy chair. When you say blood, why you said it all. When you say blood, why you said it all. When you say blood, why Bottom half of the seventh inning, here's Andy Musser. Thank you, Harry, and here we go, fans. Time for another Daily News home run payoff, the game that puts the Phillies at bat to win big money for you. Last Sunday, a homer by the Bull won Denise Mosley of Wilmington $1,000. Tonight, it could be your turn. And remember, fans, this season, every hit pays off, and you can win anywhere from $20 up to 5,000 big ones. But you've got to play to win. Just use the entry coupon appearing every day in the Daily News so that home run payoff can pay off for you. Leading off for the Phillies in the seventh inning will be Bake McBride. Bake will be swinging away for Jane B. Ring of Marshall Street in Philadelphia. And, of course, Bake had a home run here at Veterans Stadium last night. New shortstop for the Astros will be rookie Jimmy Sexton. Sexton takes over at shortstop. He was acquired from the... Seattle Ball Club for Leon Roberts. Here's Bake McBride. He is one for three. The first pitch on the way to Bake is a hard hit ball. Base hit back through the middle. McBride singles to center field to start the seventh inning. And we have a winner in the Daily News home run payoff. That'll be $20 sent to Jane B. Ring of North Marshall Street in Philadelphia in addition to the four tickets to a future game. Here's Larry Boa. Larry kept his hitting streak alive tonight with a single last time up. He has batted safely in nine straight ball games. He'll be hitting here for Donnell Farmer of Philadelphia. Pitch on the way to Boa outside a ball. The Astros are expecting him to bunt, and Larry gave indications that time that he might. Phillies would like to pick up another run here. They're only leading by two here in the seventh inning, and Danny Ozek has indicated he might have Boa bunt here and move the runner over to second base. The Phillies have six hits and three runs off Lemon Jello, who makes another throw to first to chase McBride back. Bake with two hits again tonight. He has really been hot. Another throw to first. It short hopped over there, but Watson pulled it up. Nice play. The Astro bullpen is again busy. Pitch on the way to Boa. He wants to bunt. He drops it, but it's foul. Grabbed by Ferguson. One ball and one strike to Boa. Larry is one for two tonight. He walked in the third inning. He was trying to sacrifice in the first, but he bunted the ball poorly, and McBride, who was at second, could not advance. Larry was out on the play, and no sacrifice was credited. Left-hander Joe Sambito, right-hander Kenny Forsh up for Houston. Stretch in the 1-1 pitch to Boa. Slider is high. Two and one the count. Oh, it looked like the bunt might have been off that time. Whenever Bake McBride's on first base like that, they have to hold him on because he's such a base-stealing threat. It really gives Bo a tremendous hole to shoot for in that right side. He likes to try and hit the ball that way. Here's a throw to first, and Bake has to dive back in. The Mets have added two runs in the fifth inning. They lead Montreal 4-1 to one at the end of five. Espinosa against May. Jello set to work. There goes McBride. The pitch is a line drive caught by the second baseman, Howe. And McBride was already across second base, so Howe simply flips over to Watson at first, and Boa lines into a double play. Fake McBride was a dead duck. Four tickets to a future game to Donnell Farmer of Philadelphia. So very quickly, that's two outs in the inning, and the Phillies running the 
base runner that time. Just had bad timing, that's all. Here's Mike Schmidt. Mike sent Terry Poole to the wall in left center field in his last at bat. Mike will be swinging away in the Daily News home run payoff for Lee F. Bauso of Trevo's PA. Schmidt 0 for 3. Phillies lead the ball game 3 to 1. Two out, nobody on base. Pitch to Mike. Low and outside. A slider missing. Ball one. Everybody excited about the ball game tomorrow night. Steve Carlton and Tom Seaver. They matched up a week ago Monday in Cincinnati, and the Phillies won at 12 to 1. What'll happen this time? Outside, ball two. Lemangelo winds the 2-0 pitch to Schmidt. Very high fly ball, well hit to center field. Getting back is Cedeno, but he's got plenty of room. He waits and he takes it for the out. And four tickets to a future game will be sent to Lee Bauzo of Trevos, Pennsylvania. For the Phillies in the seventh, no runs, one hit, and nobody left. So at the end of seven, Phillies lead Houston 3-1. Why do the same kind of people who love those fantastic Phillies also love Tasty Cake? Because both bring out the kids that's there in all of us. Like the delicious taste of Tasty Cake chocolate cupcakes, cream-filled cupcakes, and cream-filled coffee cake. For kids from 9 to 90, Tasty Cake and those fabulous fillies are all the good things wrapped up in one. Tasty Cake is a world of fun. All the best things wrapped up in one. Hey, Culligan Man! Hey, fans, know what the fillies and your local Culligan Man have in common? They both earned the title number one. The Phillies are number one in baseball performance, and your Culligan dealer is part of the number one water conditioning team in the world. So if you've been noticing that your water tastes, smells, or looks bad, maybe it's too hard for proper suds. Call your local Culligan dealer. He'll stop by your home for a free, no-obligation water analysis. You can buy or rent a Culligan unit. So call your Culligan man. He's under C for Culligan in the white pages. Hey, Culligan man! One of the best ways for you and your friends to have a night out on the town that you'll never forget is to attend the Phillies game in a group outing. Just pick out a date and call the Phillies group sales experts at HO35000. Let them do the rest. Group outing at the Phillies is fun for everyone, so make that phone call. Call HO35000 and then come on down to the vet for all the excitement of Phillies baseball. Well, we've got our Phillies sweepstakes going on out there in the scoreboard right now, and the bottom one just won, and the crowd really loves that. Denny Lehman does a great job on that sweepstakes. He's a very entertaining lad. Pinch hitter for the Astros to start the eighth inning. Wilbur Howard will bat for the pitcher Mark Lemangelo. Howard, a switch hitter, will bat left-handed against Lonborg. Howard is batting at 290. He's batting 267 as a left-handed batter. One home run, three runs batted in. Reserve outfielder Wilbur Howard. Lonborg has given up only four hits. In seven innings. Here's the pitch to Howard. It's a foul ball off the left field side. Strike one. Cedeno's home run. The only run up there for the Astros tonight who trail it three to one. Strike one on Howard. Swing and a miss by Howard. Nothing in two. Tug McGraw is warming for the Phillies in their bullpen. And the Astros will need a new pitcher next inning. They've got two men up again right now. Porsche and Sambito have been up. Nothing in two. The count on Wilbur Howard. Pinch hitting for Lemangelo. Here's the pitch. Just outside. Bonnie has been strong tonight. Has walked only two. Has struck out three. Wind up in the pitch to Howard. Swing and a ground ball. It's on the right side. Fielded by Johnstone. to Lonborg covering. He gets there. Howard grounds out 3-1. to one. Good play by Lonnie. He's a very, very fine fielding pitcher, and Wilbur Howard can fly, especially from the left side. And any hesitation at all by Lonborg there, and he would have been safe. And he and Jay Johnstone combined on a very fine play that looked routine, but really isn't. Here's a guy who's been a tough hitter. Terry Poole had a key hit in last night's ball game, and he had a triple to lead off tonight's game. He is one for three, left-handed batter. Wind up in the pitch by Lonborg. Outside, ball one. 20,096 here at Veterans Stadium tonight watching the ball game. Probably have about twice that many here tomorrow night. Here's a ground ball to shortstop. Larry Boa has it. Larry makes his usual steady throw across in time for the out. Let's pause for station identification. 
This is the Phillies Baseball Network. This is KYW Philadelphia. Midway in the third period, the 76ers led Washington in their playoff game 62 to 50. KYW News Time 9:30. The batter is Enos Cabell, who is 0 for 3. He has struck out, grounded into a double play, and popped out. Here's a ground ball. Schmidt has it at third base. He was playing in, too, and he throws him out. Strong inning for Lonborg in the eighth. The Astros are up and down in order at the end of seven and a half. Phils lead at 3 to 1. There's a demanding cat around. He's at your Lincoln Mercury dealers, and he wants these dealers to sell every Mercury in stock. Every one. That means you have a great chance to get into any one of his fine cars right now. From the full-size Mercury Marquis, right through his Cougars, Zephyrs, Monarchs, and Bobcats. They're all up for grabs, right now. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer quick, because that cat means business. At the... I'm a Ph.D. in economics, right? I run around to three stores to buy food, so I save a dollar here, a dollar there. And yet I let $200 sit in my checking account where it doesn't earn a cent. No more. Now I use the George machine at Gerard Bank to move money from my savings to my checking account only when I need it. With George, I push the buttons and I'm the brains behind the bank. <laughs> That's got to make me the smartest banker in town. George lets you be the banker. Gerard Bank, we're there when you need us. There are lots of motor oils on the market, but only one is made for smaller cars. Castrol. Unlike ordinary oils, Castrol's viscosity doesn't break down in smaller, hotter, higher revving engines. That's why Castrol should be standard equipment on all of them. Castrol, the oil engineered for smaller cars. And you can get all the great Castrol oils at low Penn Jersey prices. Which is why they say... When your car's not running like it did before, make a pit stop at Penn Jersey Auto Stores. A left-hander, Joe Sambito, will be in to pitch for Houston. He has had a fine season so far, has won two games, has not lost. He has a 1.80 earned run average in 15 innings of work. He has been uh, touched for only three earned runs, four walks and nine strikeouts. Joe Sambito, we called him a left-hander. Actually, he's an interesting guy because he plays tennis, he writes, and he eats right-handed. But he throws a baseball left-handed, and that's what counts right here. He led Houston in appearances last year, getting into 54 ball games, winning five and losing five, and pitching to a 2.33 earned run average. First to test him will be Greg Luzinski. The ball 0 for 2 with a base on balls. Phillies lead the game 3 to 1, and Lonborg has pitched a strong ball game. Sambito winds. Here's the pitch to the ball. It's high ball one. Sambito is 6'1, 185 pounds from Brooklyn, New York. Swing and a foul back for the ball. One ball and one strike. Greg will be followed by Jay Johnstone, who is out on the on-deck circle, though a left-hander is in there now, but Jay has made things happen tonight. Breaking ball to the ball is high. Two balls and one strike. Sambito is 25 years of age in his second big league season. Swing and a foul away. Sambito's mother usually watches the Phillies games on television. She lives out on Long Island and she receives them on the cable system out there. Two balls and two strikes to right-handed batting Greg Luzinski. Sambito's pitch is a fastball outside. We've got a full count. Lemangelo went the first seven innings giving up six hits and three runs. He walked five and struck out three. Full count to the ball. Here's Sambito's pitch. High ball four, missed with a fastball, and Greg draws his second straight walk. Jay Johnstone going back to the dugout, and Jerry Martin is coming out. Jerry Martin is going to bat for Johnstone. Jay was on base all three times tonight with two walks, one with the bases loaded, and the bunt single. Oh, I beg your pardon. Martin is going to first base to run for Luzinski, and Johnstone will bat. Jay had walked back to the dugout, and that deceived us. Jerry Martin is coming in the ball game as a pinch runner. So Greg Luzinski leaves the ball game, and Jay will bat. Sambito stretches. Astros looking for the double play. Pitch to Jay as a fastball in for a strike. Phillies still want that other run, and 
J.J. gave some indications like he might be bunting that time and uh, might just be on again. Zambito has a look at Martin at first. Here's the pitch. Fastball on the outside oh. corner. A strike, and it really looked like it was outside. Nothing and two, the count on Johnstone, and of course that hurts his butting opportunities here, the 0-2 count. If he was going to bunt that ball, he would have needed a broom. Zambito stretches. Here's the 0-2 to Johnstone. Full cut and a foul uh, rip back right underneath where we're sitting. Count holds at 0-2. Remember to stay tuned for the Tasty Cake wrap-up show right after the ball game. Rich Ashburn will have a special guest. He'll have some replays of this ball game, and he will have all the out-of-town scores. Pitch to Johnstone. Check swing. It's just outside, and that one was actually closer than the one they called strike two. Chris has his lip buttoned. He's not saying anything. One ball and two strikes the count on Johnstone. Here's Sambito's pitch. Breaking ball. Swing and a miss. Struck him out with a curveball. Zambito gets a strikeout. First out of the inning, it'll bring up Gary Maddox, who is 0 for 3. Gary struck out one time tonight. Been striking out quite a bit lately. Gary has seven strikeouts in his last four ball games. Zambito stretches. Makes the throw to first base, and Martin is just back in time. That was pretty close. Zambito looks like he's got a pretty good move. Left-handed pitcher. Mets five, Expos won that game in the seventh. Here's another throw to first. Martin gets back. Ron Reed is now up and throwing in the Phillies bullpen. Another throw to first. Martin just back. Lloyd Bannister is now up and throwing in the Houston bullpen. Here's a fastball over the outside corner. A strike to Maddox. One strike to Maddox. Zambito stretches. Here's the pitch to Gary. It's way up high. One ball and one strike. John Stearns homered for the Mets in the sixth with nobody on his first of the year. That was their fifth run. They lead five to one in the seventh. Espinosa still pitching for the Mets. Pitch to Maddox is low. Darrell Knowles, the ex-Phil, is now in there pitching for the Expos. Two and one the count to Maddox. One out in the inning with pinch runner Jerry Martin at first. Phillies lead at three to one. Throw to first. Martin gets back. Here's the stretch. And the pitch to Maddox. Swing and a bouncer toward third. It's going to be a tough play. Cabell bare hands throws to first in time for the out. Very close play at first base. Cabell made a bare hand stab of that high chopper toward third, and he threw out the speedy Gary Maddox with Martin advancing to second. Good play there by Enos Cabell. He's a really good third baseman. He came into his own last year as a really good third baseman uh, and a pretty good hitter, and uh, it's going to be around a long time. That was a super play he made right then, and Gary Maddox was definitely out. Here's Bob Boone with two outs. Martin looking around at second base to check the second baseman and shortstop, and here's the pitch to Boone. It's in for a strike call. Bob is 0 for 2 tonight with a walk and a run scored. Billy's ahead by a 3-1 to one score. Lundborg needs three more outs to wrap it up. Boone checks his swing, and the pitch is low and outside. One ball, one strike. Yes. 
One one the count to Bob Boone. Sambito stretches, takes a look at Martin. Here's the pitch. It is outside two and one. Lundborg had another strong pitching performance this year when he beat the Pirates by a six to two score. He was relieved at the end of eight innings, though he certainly could have pitched the ninth that night as he beat John Candelaria. So eight innings is as far as Lonnie has gone this year. But he had such a strong eighth inning, you get the feeling that he will be out there in the ninth tonight. The 2-1 pitch. High fly ball into medium right center field, getting over his Cruz, and he takes it for the out. Boone flies out to right fielder Cruz, and the Phillies are retired in the eighth. No runs, no hits, and one left. At the end of eight, the Phillies lead Houston 3-1. to one. I used to think of the George machine at Gerard Bank as my own private money game. If I forgot to go to the bank or needed cash on a weekend, there he was. Proceed to go and collect $200. Man, I own that withdrawal button. You know what I mean? And then I looked at all the buttons. Wow. Checking, savings, deposits, loans, transfers, balances. I got a whole bank right here. Now I do my everyday banking with George. I push the buttons and I run the bank. George lets you be the banker. Gerard Bank. We're the Two great Phillies publications on sale here at Veterans Stadium or through the mail. The Phillies yearbook, brand new again this year and one of the best ever, loaded with color pictures of the players and their families, plus lots of interesting reading on sale here at Veterans Stadium for $2. Through the mail, it costs $2.50. Also, Baseball the Phillies Way, a fully illustrated book on how to play the game of baseball, plus 27 full-color baseball cards of Phillies players. That's on sale here for $1.50. Through the mail, $2.00. For both publications, send a check or money order to Phillies Publications, P.O. Box 7575, Philadelphia, PA, 19101. Get your copies right away. Strong pitching performance by Jim Lundborg, and he's out here to start the ninth inning, although Danny Ozark has both Ron Reed and Tug McGraw already warming in the bullpen. So at the first sign of trouble, Lonnie could be done. Here's Cesar Cedeno to lead it off, and he's been tough. He's one for two tonight, a home run. He has also walked. Cedeno with two home runs in the series. Lundborg winds. Here's the pitch. Ground ball toward the hole. It's going to be a tough play. Bo, a little trouble getting it out. And safe at first base is Cedeno. I'm not sure he would have gotten him anyway. But Boa could not pluck the ball on his initial attempt. And that'll be an infield hit for Cedeno. Well, Larry knew he was really going to have to hurry. Because Cesar Cedeno can fly down the first baseline. He did just have a little bit of hesitation. And once that happened, there was no chance. And... I really don't think he would have gotten him anyway. He was really deep in the hole, and Cedeno, like I said, really gets out of the box. Here's Jose Cruz. He's one for two tonight with a walk and a stolen base. Left-handed batter. Phillies lead at three to one. Cedeno not being held, and there he goes. The pitch is high, a ball, throw to second. It bounces, and he's safe. Second stolen base of the ball game for Cedeno. And overall, the third steal in this game for Houston. Houston. Stolen base number 12 for him, Chris. Yeah, you said what happened, Andy. He was not being held on, and he's going to take that every time. He had a running jump off first base, and Bob Boone made a strong throw down there. And there was no way he was going to get him, though. He just had a running jump off first. One ball, the count to Cruz. Lonnie stretches. Here's the pitch. Foul ball out of play off the third base side. In the bullpen, McGraw, the left-hander, Reed, the right-hander, continue to warm up. Ninth inning, and the Phillies lead it 3-1. to one. Lonborg needs three outs to nail it down. Stretching the pitch to Cruz. Breaking ball, tap back to Lonborg. He will hold the runner at second, throw to first in time. Good fielding play by Lonnie, and he's made a couple of them here tonight. That's the first out. Up to the plate now, Bob Watson, and he's 0 for 3. Lonborg bidding to become the first Phillies four-game winner this year. John Denny will go for the Cardinals tonight. 
Rick Roden for the Dodgers in a game at Los Angeles. Fastball to Watson is high inside ball one. Watson, the Astro RBI leader with 19. Sedeno's at second. There's one out. The Phillies have a two-run lead. Stretch by Lonnie in the pitch. Swing and a miss. One and one to Bob Watson, right-handed batter. Lonnie takes a look at Sedeno. The pitch to Watson, ground ball, foul outside of third. Ball and two strikes to the right-handed batting first baseman of Houston with a career 300 batting average. Watson is what you call a tough out. Had an infield hit last night to drive in a run in that four-run seventh for the Astros. Lonborg at the belt. Here's the pitch to Watson. Ooh. Just a little low. Two and two the count. Lonnie has his sign from Boone. Stretching the pitch to Watson. A ball chopped slowly towards shortstop. Tough play for Boa. Gets it. Throws. In time for the out. Advancing to third on the play is Cedeno. That was a tough play for Larry because he had to hustle in and he had to throw on the run, which is never easy. That's also one of those plays where Lonborg really got in on Bob Watson. He hit the ball on the end of the bat and had that crazy spin on it going out there. And when Larry got the first hop, it took a crazy little bounce to his left and he had to stretch out and get it and then get the ball and get himself under control and throw Watson out. And it's a good play by Boa. So two down and here is Art Howe at the plate. He is 0 for 3. Howe does have some power. He has three home runs this year. Lonborg from the full windup. Ground ball headed for the hole. Short hop by Schmidt. His throw. In time, the ball game is over, and Lonborg goes the distance. For the Astros in the ninth inning, no runs, one hit, one man left on base. Phillies win this ball game 3-1, to one, and a case of tasty cake to Jim Lonborg for his root-going performance, and one to the Lafayette School. And we'll be back with the wrap-up in just a moment. Right now, MAB is having a super sale on home improvement items for spring, like a five-piece Shoreline paint applicator kit. Regularly $8.89, now just $4.99, you save $3.90. And that's only the beginning. For more great savings, see the ad in this Thursday's bulletin. And be sure to visit your nearby MAB paint store, dealer, or Rich Lux Home Center the next time you think about painting and beautifying your home. MAB, making America beautiful. Bank AmeriCard and Master Charge accepted. <laughs> The cat is really on the prowl at your Lincoln Mercury dealers. He wants these dealers to sell every Mercury in stock. Every one. That includes the anniversary edition four-door Mercury marquee with its traditional full-size luxury and comfort, plus a special value package featuring a vinyl roof, luxury wheel covers, body side moldings, flight bench seat, and more. Right now, this special package is being offered by Lincoln Mercury to its dealers at a factory discount. So check out your local Lincoln Mercury dealer now at the sign of the cat. feel good, then you just gotta come to Geno's. Because that's where you'll find Colonel Sanders' Kentucky Fried Chicken. Golden brown and finger licking good. They go together. Kentucky Fried Chicken and Geno's. So come on. Come to Geno's and feel good. Jim Lonborg, the Phillies pitcher that the team was most concerned about in spring training this year, would become the first four-game winner on the staff this season. Lonnie is 4-2 and two following his first root-going performance of the year tonight for the Phillies and beating the Astros 3-1, to one, and the only guy that hurt him was Cesar Cedeno, who had two of the five hits that Lonnie gave up, including a home run, which is, of course, the only run that the Astros scored. The key hit for the Phillies was a two-run homer by Jim Morrison, and he will be Rich Ashburn's guest on the Tasty Cake wrap-up show that follows. Chris, do you have a comment before we wrap it up? Well, just one, Andy, that uh, during the winter, he always talked about Jim Lonborg. He's always gotten off to good starts when he's pitching well, and 
all of us who, who watched Jim Lonborg since he's been with the Phillies the last five years felt that if he, he was healthy, he would show it in April and May this year and get off to the quick start, and that's exactly what he's done. He's pitched very, very well almost every time out so far. And he's perfectly healthy, and he's really giving the Phillies a good season so far, and it's really a big plus for the club, and he gets some great defensive help from his infielders tonight. Here are the totals on this ball game. Played in two hours and nine minutes in front of 20,096 at Veterans Stadium. The Phillies had three runs, six hits, no errors. They left seven men on base. The Astros had one run, five hits, no errors, five men left on base. Lonnie the distance for his fourth victory. He walked only two and he struck out three. The losing pitcher, Mark Lemangelo, he's 0-3 lifetime against the Phillies. This year he is 2-4. Lemangelo went the first seven innings, giving up six hits in all three runs. Joe Sambito pitched the final inning for Houston. The first career home run for Jim Morrison tonight, and Rich Ashburn will be talking with him in just a moment. Cesar Cedeno, the only home run for Houston, and the only run on the board for Houston. So a fine ball game, and the Phillies and the Astros split this series one game aside, and tomorrow the Phillies will be up against the Cincinnati Reds, Tom Seaver, and Steve Carlton at 7.35 tomorrow night. Maureen Shaughnessy has been our engineer for tonight's game. Our executive producer is Steve Silverman. Phillies baseball is a presentation of the Philadelphia Phillies. And so for Harry Callis, Rich Ashburn, and Chris Wheeler, Andy Musser saying so long from Veteran Stadium, where the Phillies have beaten the Astros 3-1. to This is the Phillies Baseball Network.